Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the Online Series 13 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. Today we are trying out one of the first teams to reach rank number one in this format. This was built and piloted by a player called Neil VGC, who has his own YouTube channel, and he honestly makes some of the best VGC content out there on YouTube, super underrated, so I've linked him down in the description below, please go check him out. The idea of the team here is that you just have so much pure offense and, you know, has some familiar faces. These are all Pokemon that we used in Series 12, no mythical Pokemon, uh, but the sheer power is just absolutely crazy. So, as always, I'll do a quick breakdown of the team, but if you want to just skip to the battles, check out the timestamps in the description below. And question of the day, I want to know what you're currently trying out in Series 13. And if you enjoy, please share your support by leaving a like on the video, I'd really appreciate it. So before we get started, actually, Neil posted a breakdown of this team on his YouTube channel, and he also posted some of the battles that he had in order to reach rank number one with this exact team, so I highly recommend you go check out both of those videos. It's way better input than I could really provide on the team, and so yeah, since he does have a full team report for it, uh, it's a relatively short watch, I want to instead highlight like just what are some of the cool things that I think make this team really strong. First of all, I love this Whimsicott moveset. He's got both Tailwind and Trick Room on the moveset, as well as Helping Hand. Tailwind and Trick Room is really unique, right? And But in a format like this, speed control is just so important, right? Like, I've gone against so many other opposing Whimsicots that have Tailwind. I've also gone up against uh, some, you know, Trick Room teams as well. And so the idea here is with Tailwind and Trick Room, you keep your opponents guessing, right? If you're going up against an opposing Tailwind team, you could, of course, set up your own Tailwind, or you could just set up Trick Room immediately. And if you're going up against an opposing Trick Room team, you can actually use the Trick Room to reverse their Trick Room. So I think this kind of Whimsicott set will actually be pretty standard going forward in the format, because having two means of speed control in a format where you're using such powerful Pokemon is really valuable. You've got the Energy Ball here to better deal with Gastrodon uh, and just other water types, right? You can chip away at Kyogre as well. And then Helping Hand here is just to maximize your damage output. And if you do go up against a Fake Out user like Zeraora, for example, you can Fake Out or Helping Hand to support the rest of your Pokemon. So I think this is a really, really smart Whimsicott move set. The Lunala here is also modest max speed, uh, so once again the idea behind this is at plus 1 speed you can outspeed Calyrex Shadow Rider, so you're normally going to try to combo that with Charizard to give the Lunala speed boost and then Lunala can just Moon Guys Beam, right, in the subsequent turn. Uh, the Lunala here also has Wide Guard. I think Wide Guard should be used on most Lunalas in this format because of the number of spread attacks that you're going to run into. Astro Barrage from Calyrex Shadow Rider, Water Spout slash Origin Pulse from Kyogre, Press with Blades from Groudon, and yeah, if you can catch your opponent off guard with a single Wide Guard, they can just lose so much momentum immediately. Uh, and the thing about Wide Guard Lunala is even if your opponents don't click a spread type attack, this is really strong into uh, Pokemon like Calyrex Shadow Rider, right? Because Calyrex essentially just can't really do anything since it relies so heavily on Astro Barrage other than maybe Dynamaxing to deal with Lunala. But then they've committed their Dynamax to Calyrex, and you can play accordingly. You've got a Weakness Policy, or sorry, Life Orb Charizard here. I've seen so many Weakness Policy Charizards from Worlds, and I'm so used to it. But this is just classic, you know, pretty much max max offense uh, with Heat Wave, Solar Beam, Hurricane, Protect. And so Heat Wave here, you know, it's a little bit less damage for base power for your G-Max Wildfire. But the idea is that it makes Charizard a little bit more effective as a sweeper in the late game. And it means you can also bring it and actually not necessarily need to rely on maxing it in order to uh, get good damage out of it. The Groudon here is a classic Assault Vest set. Uh, the main thing to note is that it has Fire Punch, Stone Edge, and Heavy Slam, so there's no, like, Shadow Claw. Um, but yeah, you know, Groudon with Assault Vest generally can run, like, five to six moves, and, you know, these are all pretty standard. There's also no Heat Crash, you have Fire Punch instead. This Kyogre is super standard as well, it's just Mystic Water, max speed, max special attack, with Water Spell, Origin Pulse, Thunder, and Protect. Thunder is a lot more valuable in this format, as opposed to something like Ice Beam, because you're going to use it a lot against opposing Kyogres. It's also good into things like Volcanion, for example, uh, and so yeah, Ice Beam isn't as necessary in this format relative to, say, Series 12. And finally, you've got just a Zacian here. This is a pretty bulky Zacian with 188 HP EVs, but, you know, good attack and speed investment as well. And it has a uh, Behemoth Blade, Close Combat, Quick Attack, and Protect. So no Play Rough, no Wild Charge, no Sacred Sword. Close Combat is just a lot more, you know, damage uh, relative to Sacred Sword. And in this format, there's not that much time for opponents to really get defense boosts. Uh, and so, yeah, it's just, you know, kind of dealing a little bit more damage to try to pick up knockouts on things you otherwise wouldn't KO with Sacred Sword. And then Quick Attack is one of those, you know, surprise moves that can always catch your opponent off guard. Focus Sash is a fairly common item in this format. I think every team really should be running one for the most part. Uh, and so Quick Attack can obviously finish those those things off if they're not ghost type like Calyrex or uh, Lunala for example, although Lunala running a sash seems kind of bizarre. So yeah, 
There are lots of different modes that you can play with this team, right? Like Whimsicott Charizard with Groudon plus a, you know, fourth restricted here in the back. I think what's also interesting is that Whimsicott and Charizard are obviously not restricted, but they're both so powerful and Charizard in itself often feels like a restricted Pokemon, hence why it was so popular in Series 12, right? It's like, has the damage output of a restricted Pokemon, but doesn't, doesn't even need to take up a restricted slot. But with this team, it just synergizes so nicely with Groudon. You could also go with like Whimsicott Lunala. This is a potential way to set up Trick Room where you can wide guard and then Trick Room with Whimsicott. Really valuable into opposing like Tailwind teams, for example, opposing Calyrex Shadow Rider. Uh, and then once Trick Room is set up, then you can try to sweep with Groudon plus a fourth restricted in the back. Uh, you can obviously just go Charizard Groudon uh, as a lead immediately. But I, I think since this format really values speed control, you're not going to get away with that as much as maybe you would have been able to in uh, the previous format. So yeah. That's a quick breakdown of the team and some of the things that I really like about it. Once again, don't forget to check out Neil's video about how we constructed it, and let's get started with the battles. Alright. For this one, we've got Blastoise, Calyrex, Shedinja, Kyogre, Gastron, and Lugia. That's really cool. A uh, team with only three Restricteds, but I think in the context of their team, it makes a lot of sense. Um... I think we can just set up Tailwind and go from there with Charizard. The only way they can deny Tailwind is a fake out from Blastoise on turn one. Charizard in general is just really strong. Should deter Shedinja from coming out into the battle. If I'm my opponent, what am I bringing? Maybe just Calyrex, Kyogre, Lugia, Gastrodon? Or Blastoise over Gastrodon? I don't think I want my own Kyogre here. Like, I think I'm down for Whimsicott Charizard lead with Groudon and Lunala in the back. Uh, a GMAX Wildfire immediately is just really strong here because it can, you know, uh, KO Shedinja, obviously. But it also sets up the Wildfire, which will break Focus Sash on the Calyrex and break Lugia's multi-skill as well. So I'm okay prioritizing the early uh, Wildfire. Also, if we give the Lunala speed boost, it outspeeds Calyrex Shadow Rider at plus one speed. So we can look to position for max airstream, but of course I might just set up Tailwind instead. Uh, and then the Whims got his energy ball, so we have decent damage and a Kyogre and Gastrodon with it as well. So I'm mainly curious if they lead Blastoise here and Thread and Fake out onto Whimsicott. It's gonna be Lugia Calyrex. Okay, that works for me. Um, guess the only interesting thing here is if they like are Trick Room on Calyrex. That could be funky, but. I, mean, I think I'm down and just Tailwind plus Wildfire here into Calyrex. I wonder if it's like a self-weakness policy activation onto Lugia or something funky here. Okay, so we're going to Dynamax first. Be interesting if neither Pokemon Max is here. I mean, like, Lugia's base speed is higher than Charizard, so that might be the case. Worst case would probably be Calyrex just setting up Trick Room on turn 1. If Trick Room goes up... Uh, we, we actually, it wouldn't be the worst scenario because I can just max guard and reverse trick room on turn two and then switch into ground on turn three, but they're just slower with Lugia. Okay, that's interesting. So, maybe it's a bulky weakness policy set. The main thing about Lugia is that it is not exactly super powerful without special attack boosts or without a, you know, like a weakness policy. So, it hasn't been able to set up quite yet. Maybe Calyrex will self activate policy though. That's kind of what I'm expecting. We'll get Tailwind up here with the Whimsicott. Get GMAX Wildfire off here onto Calyrex. Okay, it's gonna faint after Wildfire, perfect. What do they go for? Okay, it's just Astral Barrage. That looked like Specs damage to me, based off how much I took on um, Charizard, but I'm not 100% sure. They airstream into us. That was a lot of damage, actually. Yeah, I think the Calyrex just did a little bit more than I expected, but very fast-paced and offensive turn for my opponent on turn one. Okay, so I think Calyrex should faint here. Yep. Um, I've got Groudon in the back, and I've got Lunala. Lunala is a pretty great switch in right now. Basically, like I could bring in Groudon, but they could just bring in Kyogre, right? Uh, whereas if I bring in Lunala, I could switch to Lunala out. I can even look to just like go for. Well, I guess, um, yeah, yeah. Whimsicott's still out on the field. But, this means I can just Energy Ball the Gastrodon. I'm down for that. I mean, I also have Max Overgrowth here on um, Charizard. 
But I also could just pivot the Whimsicott out into Groudon and just G-Max Wildfire the uh, Lugia. The thing is, if they don't expect Energy Ball here, I can just win off that. And since I know Charizard's faster, even if they Airstream the Whimsicott, it's still okay. So yeah, I'm down to just Max Guard here. Nice, no Protect. No Rindo Berry either, so we get Energy Ball into Gastrodon. That's a KO. I'm really surprised they brought Gastrodon out first rather than like another Restricted and actually Airstream into the Max Guard. Perfect. So yeah, so far, like, you know, we, we haven't even brought a Restricted out yet, but turns out Charizard is still pretty darn powerful in this format, so it's not a bad pick. The thing is, the pool of uh, non restricted that you can use viably in this format is just way slimmer than previously, but like Thunderous and Charizard are still both pretty solid max options in my opinion. Um, I've got Groudon and Lunala in the back, like I could just switch into Groudon here, set up the sun. And I'm actually down to just Overgrowth Kyogre, I think. Like, Lugia isn't really too much of a problem for the, um, given that we have Lunala in the back. And what, like, the one way I, could, I see myself potentially losing this is if I were to, like, G-Max Wildfire into Lugia while the sun is up, Lugia Max Guards, and then Kyogre Water Spouts, KOs the Charizard, and Groudon takes a ton of unnecessary damage. Whereas in this position, yeah, I suppose the Kyogre could protect, right? But even if it does, that's okay. Uh, maybe Lugia gets another max airstream off onto either slot, but then I could just bring out Lunala and at this point I've won the weather war as well and they don't protect anything so Life Orb Solar Power max overgrowth if they're on Assault Vest, I think this could KO after Wildfire That's really close actually Okay That's fine That's just so much damage immediately onto that Charizard takes some more there's Airstream, yep. And now it's like if you click Water Spout, right? You just really don't do very much damage, but... Lugia actually has been hitting for a decent amount, so... Yeah, it's maybe not as weak as I initially gave it credit for. Actually, Ice Beam here, okay. Makes sense if you don't want to miss an Origin Pulse or click Water Spout there to just guarantee the knockout on a Charizard. I think that's fair. Hey... Wildfire still ticking. We've gotten a lot of value out of Wildfire this game, which is awesome. At this point, Lunala should pretty comfortably win against both of my opponent's Pokemon. And I still have one more turn of Wildfire, so the Kyogre is just going to faint to that. So we can bring out Whimsicott first. Yeah, and with Whimsicott out, uh, Lunala will clean up the game against Lugia. It's interesting to see Lugia in general here. I'm just I'm curious on the item on it, because it wasn't Life Orb. That's the item I'd expect the most. Yeah, so last turn of Tailwind, you're at plus one, Wildfire, you're at plus two. The Whimsicott does outspeed the Lugia, because Charizard outsped Lugia. So, like, uh... No need to activate a Weakness Policy here. I'm honestly fine just clicking Fire Punch plus Energy Ball. KO Kyogre before we can attack Groudon. And they actually just end up forfeiting, yeah. Lu Lu like, Lunala was always going to clean up this one. Um, and so, part of the advantage was gaining a quick Pokemon lead. And by gaining the quick Pokemon lead, uh, it meant that we could win the Weather War against Kyogre pretty comfortably. But I think the Energy Ball tech here on Whimsicott was huge. And Gashiron and Kyogre not opting to protect in either situation was also huge. And then Charizard just got so much damage across the board. So, yeah. G-Max Charizard turns out is still pretty good in this format. Our next game here, and it is Kyogre, Evoltal, Zacian, Aleki, Grimstar, and Incineroar. So this actually very much feels like a Series 12 team as well. Like, you know, Aleki, Evoltal, Kyogre, Incin was a solid core. So it's interesting to play back-to-back -back teams with um, three Restricteds rather than four or more. With the Evoltal, I'm a little bit concerned about Lunala. Uh, Zacian probably needs to come out here. Like, the interesting thing with Incineroar in this format is that, like, it often just doesn't get more than a fake out off. So would you really bring it is the question. Mm. You know, I think one uh, approach we could take in this game is uh, Groudon, Dynamax Groudon under Trick Room. But yeah, I don't hate that, actually. So I'm intrigued by the idea of, like, Whimsicott, Zashi, and Lead, and then Groudon, Kyogre in the back. Because, like, I could also set up Tailwind with this approach, but the strength of the Whimsicott having both Tailwind and Trick Room is that it keeps my options flexible. Uh, Lunala is... I, I think it's actually still worth considering here, but I don't feel super confident with it. 
And the interesting thing is, like, Lunala into Evil Tall, like, obviously Evil Tall can just, you know, demolish Lunala with dark type attacks, but, like, a plus one Meteor Beam still does a ton of damage, and there's no guarantee Evil Tall Dynamaxes on my opponent's side. But I think Max Ground on here can be really strong under Trick Room, so that's what we're angling for. We're gonna go with Aleki and Evil Tall. Hmm. I mean, I could just Tailwind here then. They could max Airstream plus Electro Web into Whimsicott. I have Helping Hand, so I could Helping Hand Behemoth Blade. They could be Dynamax Reggie Aleki, like max Lightning Zacian. I really want to Trick Room here, I think. I think I'm down to Trick Room and Behemoth Blade Evil Tall. Because if they Dynamax Regieleki, then it means Groudon can just crush it. Evil Tall just protects. Okay, that's fine. It's a lucky Electro Web. Ooh, that's a really good turn. For us. Nice. The reason why that's very good is because now you've dropped Zacian speed, so I actually I'll outspeed you under Trick Room. So. Yeah, this is the really fun thing about this Whimsicott set. I wouldn't be surprised if Tailwind and Trick Room becomes pretty common on Whimsicott in these formats, because it's like that flexibility is just really wild. So like now I can pressure with Helping Hand plus Behemoth Blade onto the um, Evil Tall slot. You can switch out here, but like... I I'm trying to play a Groudon strategy-centered game, right? So it's like, even if I don't get that much off Zacian in this game, that's honestly okay. But I'm already uh, fairly happy about how turn one played out. Especially because Aleki cho uh, chose to drop my speed. But from my opponent's perspective, it makes a lot of sense because they were expecting Tailwind, right? So if I Tailwind th in that position, Aleki immediately drops me, you know, down. And then the next turn, they can just Electro Web again. I wouldn't be surprised if it was just max speed, Focus Sash, Reggie Aleki here. So the Evil Tall slot is pressured immensely at the moment. Yeah, and they're going to switch it out. Maybe Kyogre coming in. Ooh, that's actually their Zacian. I, I probably just got a free KO here. Cool. And the other thing is, like, with my opponent choosing to bring Reggie Alecki out in this battle, I can essentially just, like, like force it to stay out on the field um, with Groudon, right? Because, like, Groudon doesn't care about Reggie Alecki at all. Although, honestly, if, if Zacian just faints here and they KO my Zacian with, like, a Thunderbolt, it's a free switch and a Kyogre for me. I'd probably rather go Kyogre first. Yep, let me just Thunderbolt. That's fine. I don't even know if this KOs. It does not. Cool. Uh, I just get the Paralysis, which is actually really dicey, because now if I get full para next turn, things can get complicated. What are they bringing out? Kyogre, okay. Yeah, that's fine. You can see why I wanted to focus on Groudon, right? Groudon has a fairly good matchup into all of my opponent's Pokemon at this point. So I still have three turns of Trick Room left. Mm. I wonder if, like, they should be Sasha Lucky here, I would think. So they do threaten me with the double KO. Uh, which I have to be a little bit careful about. Kyogre is definitely their Dynamax option at this point, right? Okay, I'm down to Energy Ball Kyogre Protect here to try to get the free switch into Groudon. We'll see if they commit a Dynamax here. They don't max, actually, okay. That's fine by me. It's Kyogre Protect. No Protect on either. Oh, energy Ball does so much there. That was a crit, that would explain why, okay. If, it, if that was a crit, then I think that might be Assault Vest Kyogre, because without uh, a crit, I would expect to do a lot more. Or I, I, I was just expecting to do that, like, slightly less without the crit, basically. Yeah, and they Thunderbolt us. Perfect. So now I get the free switch into Groudon, which is what I'm looking for. Okay, Whimsicott faints. Actually, I think it should be Kyogre first. The only awkward thing with Groudon is, like, I mean, they're gonna, what, look towards maxing Evil Tall? Like, I brought Kyogre in this game, so I'm gonna reset my own weather, which is, like, slightly awkward, but I think it's okay. 
And like I said, I'm fairly sure that's Assault Vest Kyogre based off the Energy Ball damage. So they can't protect in front of me right now. And I still have two turns of Trick Room, which is perfect. So I'm actually down a Dynamax Rockfall into the Kyogre slot here, which covers for them switching out into um, Evil Tall and then just Close Combat Regieleki. We also know the Evil Tall protected on turn one, so that's not Assault Vest, right? So like, okay, they're actually going to stay in with Kyogre though. Ooh, um, that's a good play. That's a good play. I could also be wrong that they're just not like Dynamax, or sorry, Assault Vest. I don't know, but I guess Energy Ball did less than I expected then, given the crit. Ugh, I get full parrot on Zacian. Okay. Uh, I don't think Rockfall KOs Kyogre here either. But after Sand, I think it does. Okay, that's not too bad then. Because, like, they're forced to bring in Evil Tall, but, like, Max Evil Tall now is looking kind of scary. Oh, they Water Spout. Okay, that does literally no damage. Thunderbolt into Zacian. Yeah, so, like, if I didn't get full parrot on Zacian there, that's probably just a double KO, right? Because I think uh, Kyogre faints after Sand. And then, so it's my regular Kyogre plus Groudon against their um, Evil Tall, but that's okay. I still have one more turn of Trick Room, so they should obviously just double Protect. I can get a Special Defense boost via Max Quake with Groudon though, which is obviously fairly valuable here. Uh, we never found out the item on Evil Tall yet, but I think Policy, or sorry, Life Orb would make a lot of sense. Yeah, getting Parrot in this game like was just unfortunate. Because the odds of obviously getting paired from Thunderbolt aren't super high, but, you know, we can still win this game, so let's not focus on that. Last turn of Trick Room. I guess a Lecky could max here, but that would be kind of crazy, right? So we'll max Quake here. I'm down to just Spout. Getting a special defense boost here is going to be pretty important. They are actually going to Dynamax here, so I'm curious if they do the max to Guard? I mean, Water Spout right now just crushes both of these as well, right? Yep, yeah, so they max Evil Tall. Are you max guarding Evil Tall here? That's my main question, because they might not need to. Because, like, they they might think, okay, I can protect Aleki and max Darkness here. But they do max guard, okay. So it's just a double protect, I think. Yeah, that's fine. Um, in doing that, they actually waste the turn at their Dynamax, which is obviously good for me. Okay, so we get max Quake off here. Almost KOs through Protect. So critically, I get a special defense boost now, right? But... Groudon's Dynamax here is about to come to an end. Get Water Spout off. Trick Room expires. I mean, I think the best play here, truthfully, is to just, um... Go for another Max Guard. Or sorry, a Protect with Kyogre and just KO Regieleki here. Get a special defense boost along the way. Yeah, it's annoying that, like, when Aleki should have just fainted earlier, and I have to spend two turns, like, dealing with it, but that's okay. Um, Yeah, I think this is just fine. Unless, I don't know, it's, like, physical evil toll and Reggie Aleki is Screech here. But if I if they have that, then so be it. <laughs> okay, it's Eerie Impulse. Perfect. Nice. So they should Darkness here into either slot. Cool, they target Kyogre, 176 down to 151, so I took 25 damage there. They dropped my special defense, I boosted it back up, so that's good. Hoping to finally see an item from Evil Tall here. Yeah, it's Life Orb, beautiful. And the reason I just really want to see the item there is so I can go uh, click Stone Edge with more confidence, because otherwise I'd just be a little bit hesitant about weakness policy. Um, just because I feel like weakness policy is an item, like, people just kind of forget about on Evil Tall, and, um, uh, that's actually the one item I think, like, could give my opponent some pretty good comeback potential. But, you can see why I wanted to hyper-focus on Dynamax Groudon in this game, right? The special defense boost was just so valuable, but ultimately it was just, uh, Whimsicott being able to set up Trick Room that was so advantageous for us. So, plus one special defense, plus one, they can Darkness again, it's the last turn of their Dynamax, I've got Stone Edge here, so we're just gonna click Stone Edge, and I don't want to risk missing... So we're just going to Thunder. As long as we don't get crit here, we should win. Actually, I need a hit Stone Edge as well. That's the thing. Because they can't one-shot Kyogre here. Yeah. That's why the special defense boosts were really valuable. And this is what I mean, right? Like, Regieleki under Trick Room is just a complete disaster. So we use that to our advantage. 
Okay, nice. We got Thunder off there. Solid damage. No para, but importantly, Stone Edge connects here. Perfect. Okay, with that then, I don't even need to risk missing attacks next turn. Because at this point, um... Oh, I guess Evil took an Oblivion Wing here to heal back, but... Like, I would expect Heavy Slam to KO here. And Thunder. You're not going to heal back that much against Kyogre. Uh, I also could have protected Kyogre, but I think that's one way to throw the game. If I, Well, I guess I could protect Stone Edge rather than protect Heavy Slam. Because then even if they Oblivion Wing into Groudon, it's fine. But here, if they just make the wrong target, they lose immediately, right? They do target Kyogre. That's fine. If we don't KO via Heavy Slam, then I will just click Stone Edge next turn, maybe. Ah, that is a little bit more recovery than I would have liked to see, I suppose. But after Life Orb, I think we'll be good. Let's see. I think it's like, yeah. Heavy Slam into other Restricteds just isn't that much damage, but we're good. I actually don't know the base power on that relative to Evil Tall. Just because I, I never really use Heavy Slam Groudon uh, in Series 12. So, yeah. Either way, though, yeah, I think, like... Just important to not tilt even after the para and then getting fully paralyzed on Regieleki. And we just had a really favorable matchup since my opponent's team is designed to be really fast with Regieleki, Evil Tail, Kyogre in that core. Um, helping Hand and Trick Room are both really instrumental. Actually, all of Whimsicott's moves are so important here, right? Without Helping Hand, I don't guarantee the one-hit K onto the Zacian. Without Trick Room, I don't get the early speed advantage. And then without Energy Ball, I don't get to just do a lot of damage to Kyogre and then gauge, like, you know, what kind of set it is. Um... Yeah, they clicked Water Spout there. Like, I was expecting them to maybe switch out into Evil Tall, uh, baiting out, a, like, me max quaking into that slot, which is exactly why I didn't want to quake there. Um, but, yeah. What would have been interesting is if they actually Dynamax Kyogre there. It's a really risky play, but then you get Geyser off, and then, like, Sand is, uh, yeah, like, removed. And then so, like, Regilecki's potential Focus Sash might not be broken there. But, yeah, we were able to get the win here. So, let's look for another. Third game here, and ooh, a bunch of new Pokemon. Volcanion as well as Melmetal. I have legitimately never played against Melmetal or seen the Pokemon outside of like a random exhibition battle for one of the Players' Cup streams that feature the casters. That was actually a really, really hype um, battle, but yeah, I have no idea what that does. <laughs> so we're about to learn. Mm, could be a Dynamax Groudon game once again. Like, Max Groudon's really good into so many of their Pokemon. Mainly leaning towards that. I mean, Charizard's actually really powerful here, no? Actually, why Yeah, why am I not maxing Charizard here? I think I'm down for, like, Whimsicott, Charizard, Groudon, and interestingly enough, maybe Lunala. Kyogre is also solid here. I don't think I want Zashin because of their Groudon, Melmetal. Well, we do have close combat. Whimsicott, Charizard, Groudon. Uh, I think Kyogre is fine here. Like, Water Spot's just so good into Groudon, Evil Tell Zacian, and Melmetal. So, yeah. I actually want to just quickly pull up Melmetal, because I legit know nothing about this Pokemon. And I've played, you know, about 25, 30 games of Series 12 so far, and I actually haven't run into a single one, which is interesting. So, really good defensive stats, pretty poor base special defense. It's evil 12 Groudon. Okay. Uh, that works. I mean, you just set up the sun for me. Like, turn one, I think I can just helping hand G-Max Wildfire the Groudon? No? They have no way to stop that. Charizard is still just so good. Okay, I guess... The one risk in this is if you're AV Groudon, you uh, Oblivion Wing Whimsicon just max Rockfall Charizard, and I just lose both Pokemon. But then I have Tailwind up, and it's just so oppressive. Okay, I'm down. Maybe, maybe setting up Tailwind actually with Whimsicott. Oh no, I, I won't have Tailwind up because I'm going for Helping Hand. Yeah, so maybe Tailwind Wildfire is better because then it just ensures I have speed control. Yeah. They would have to Dynamax Groudon, be Assault Vis, and Rockfall Charizard and Oblivion Wing here. So that's like the one possible, you know, scenario I lose to. Okay, let's see what's maxing here. And some players might be afraid of Charty Charizard, so I wouldn't be surprised to see them double up, and they max Evil Tall. Okay, cool. 
So the idea here is I just nuke Groudon immediately, even if Groudon protects, that's totally fine, because it means Charizard survives for more than one turn, and then I can Tailwind and go from there in the subsequent turns. Okay. Help me hand. Beautiful. And Charizard's by far the biggest, uh, or Groudon's by far the biggest threat to Charizard here. I was gonna say, but unless they're Focus Sash, what? Oh... It's fine, it's fine. I can get Tailwind up, okay, yeah. Focus Ash Groudon though, that's cool. Um, Yeah, it's actually kind of a problem because my damage I'll put into Evil Tall isn't amazing. They actually click Rock Slide here, Whimsicott dodges it. Does the KO Charizard from the range that we're at? It does. Focus Ash Groudon. I guess that's the thing with Series 13 though, like, you can throw a Sash onto any restricted Pokemon, right? Because like, the sheer power is just crazy in this format, so... I guess I need to respect it more as an option. I haven't really run into too many Sash restricted that have, like, messed me up thus far because I've tried to play around it, but yeah, this was a clear example of it giving me some trouble. Uh, I can Tailwind now. I can even Trick Room. Mm, I think I'll go into Kyogre here since we've won the Weather War. Wow, okay. Not how I expected to want to play out. Volcanion. Um, with Volcanion here, like, I'm kind of down to just helping hand thunder it, personally. <laughs> Watch that be Assault Vest now. Okay. Get protect. Very nicely played. <sighs> like the thing is, I could have wildfired the um the target Whimsicott, okay. Like I could have wildfired the Evil Tall slot on turn one, right? But like at that position, I don't know who's maxing between Evil Tall and Groudon, but my opponent most likely is almost always gonna max Evil Tall there, because like with Sash on Groudon, it's not as consistent of a max option. Yeah. They've just played very nicely to start this game, so kudos to them. I don't expect their final Pokemon to be, is the other question. Mm, I'm down to Tailwind here, and then... Uh, like, the problem here... <laughs> is... I don't want the Sun up while Kyogre's out on the field, so I want to Tailwind, like... Switch out into Groudon? Uh, this is a really tough spot to be in. Yeah. Okay. We'll Tailwind and switch. This just focus Ash Groudon I didn't expect. Mm. If I were to replay turn 1, maybe the better play is to max guard Charizard Tailwind turn 1 just to make sure I maintain the speed advantage and then go from there. But basically, yeah, like the, the one awkward thing about bringing both Kyogre and Groudon is like I wanting a you know, specific weather up. We're gonna darkness here and a grout on. Okay, that's just so much damage. I don't think I can win from this angle, given how much I took there. Maybe I could have just stayed in with Kyogre, but then Kyogre just takes so much. And they flamethrower into the Whimsicott slot. Okay. Uh, Volcania being able to just ignore the wildfire here is also really good for my opponent, right? You know what? I think it's still doable. The problem is I never confirmed Evil Tall's speed. If they're max speed, though, they just outspeed Kyogre, which is a pretty big problem for me right now. Um, Volcanion also has a speed boost, but we have Tailwind up. I don't know if Thunder KOs Evil Tall from that range. Minus one special defense, plus two speed. What I'm thinking of is just Water Spout, try to KO Evil Tall, and then Precipice Blades become single target into Volcanion. Like, it's already looking pretty slim here, and I can't protect Groudon. Uh, but they just go for Oblivion Wing. Okay. Didn't do that much in a Kyogre, but I'm not going to do as much in return, and they are indeed faster as well. 
But, you know, if they were a slower Evolt all there, we could just get the KO immediately. So, I was willing to take that bet. It was just Focus Ash Groudon that completely caught me off guard here. And then the turn 2 Volcanium Protect was also very good. I don't assume Precipice Blades will KO here. And their Shuka Berry. Very cool. It's really neat to go up against some of these other Mythicals, because I've just barely fought against them. But I think um, Shuka and Volcanium make so much sense. Yep. And we get to see Steam Eruption. That's my first time seeing this animation in the game, actually. <laughs> That's awesome. Nicely played. Nicely played. Um, yeah, Volcanium was so good into, like, the Kyogre here, ultimately. And, yeah, my opponent just made one, you know, really good defensive play. So if I were to replay this, like, they let Groudon, Evoltal, I don't know, Lunala could be good if we, we eliminate Evoltal early. Like, so, I don't know, like... I don't hate a max guard on Charizard there on turn one uh, into Tailwind. Get the speed advantage, right? Whimsicott and ended up fainting there, so I would have gotten a free switch in and to my own Groudon. And then we can play the game from there. But, yeah. I do want to see if Thunder can KO Volcanion here. Yep, they just Oblivion Wing again. So it's funny because the lead looked so good, right? It's like, oh, you set up the sun for us. Charizard's in a really advantageous position. Um, but I'm curious uh, if the, the there was any chance we could survive the darkness or uh, Airstream plus Rock Slide there. Yeah, Thunder does get the KO. I'm curious what their last one is, uh, is as well. I think Exhaustion just makes the most sense, but yeah. Like I said, I think uh, it makes a lot of sense to just throw Focus Sash onto pretty much any restricted Pokemon in this format. Uh, and so you can see Charizard actually had a really good matchup against my opponent's entire team, but I just lost it on turn one, right? Um, also curious about the Evil Tall item, because one play I had was just helping Hand and Wildfire into Evil Tall instead. And maybe I should have thought about that a little bit more, because my damage output into Evil Tall wasn't amazing. And also, if I eliminate Evil Tall, then my Groudon can just come out and then win the game with Presbyterian Blades onto a lot of their Pokemon. But, yeah. Nicely played. Very nicely played. Um, like, I, I think they played this game nearly perfectly. They had, you know, the Sash Grout on tech, which was really cool. They protected Volcania, which is exactly what they needed to do in that position. Um, yeah. So, Volcania is a Pokemon that I definitely want to explore a little bit. Because, yeah. Like, having something uh, as a switch in into a Kyogre is really valuable in this format. Because otherwise, you know, Water Spot is just so crazy. So, yeah. Anyway, that's going to be it for this one. So thank you so much as always for watching. Thank you to Neil VGC once again for the team. Details in the description below and please go check them out. Leave a like if you enjoy. Don't forget to answer the question of the day and I'll see you all soon. All right, peace.